Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Torge Petersen from the Software PA Group at Danfoss Power Solution. In this video, I would like to show you a guide feature implemented in version 7.2 in 2015. It is called Automatically Generate Service Tool Diagnostic Application File and provides all signals on each page of the guide application in the same three hierarchy as in guide. So if there is a checkpoint, for example, on a specific guide page, you should be able to open this diagnos um, diagnostic application file and navigate to the same P1D page position as the guide page and find your checkpoint signal there. It is a non-released uh, feature, which means it has been added to guide and updated with new P1D formats, but it has never been released officially. That's why it still has the status for evaluation. So please keep in mind that not all requirements are implemented and not all uh, testing is finished. So this automatically generated P1D file is not intended for use by uh, service technicians. But enough has been implemented that this feature is intended for use by Plus One Guide developers to simply di diagnostics of the application during development. I will show you in the next minutes how to activate this feature, what it provides and how to use it. Starting in guide, this feature needs to be activated or unlocked. In the guide menu setup under options, you will find in the subgroup compilation, the only setting option automatically generate service tool diagnostic application file P1D on compile. Check this setting box, click apply and then OK. After this setting, the P1D will be automatically generated right after you compiled the project via compile or comment. The automatically generated diagnostic file will be located inside the folder outputs of the project manager. You cannot delete this file directly out of the project manager. If you want to, you need to go to the project location and delete this P1D manually. As long as the setting to automatically generate P1D, this file will be updated anytime the project has been compiled. But let's take a look how this diagnostic file looks like. The easiest way to open the P1D is via double click directly inside the project manager. After this automatically generated P1D has been opened, the service tool scans the system and checks if the LHX downloaded on the controller and the automatically generated P1D match. Otherwise, the message the ECU with the appropriate software intended for use with the automatically P1D could not be found. Um, some reason could be the software file bundle with the P1D is not yet downloaded to the ECU. The ECU might not be connected or a rescan of the system might be required. Independent, if it matches, you can continue by clicking OK and get the next message where you can decide if you want to run the correctness check automatically on any page change until the correct node is found. This means that the message that the LHX and the P1D do not match will be shown after any page change as long as the correct match has been fixed. And this is how it looks like in the service tool page. On the left where the LHX download on the controller and the P1D match and on the right where it doesn't. As you can see on the right it is needed to match the LHX and the P1D to make any signal and parameter visible. So the very first step is to update the controller with the P1D related LHX file. You can update your controller like you do normally via download file to ECU or you can choose the option inside the P1D itself called download file. On that button or action you can see already the selected project name. After the current LHX file has been downloaded to the controller the system will be scanned again and a message will appear that the correct ECU has been found. Click OK and the main page is shown again on top. Now the downloaded LHX match with a P1D, but it still shows the orange colored node use correctness checking to make them visible. That's because you clicked no on the second message at the beginning. If you want to run the correctness check automatically on any page change until the correct node is found. To get rid of this node, just click on correctness checking and confirm the message. Now we can have a look to the automatically generated P1D and its subpages and signals. Inside the service tool system navigator there is one parameter page called main task. This parameter page does contain any page of the guide application in the same three hierarchy. The same three hierarchy is shown inside the service tool page main task where you can click on each page name to show all signals related to that page. Each page has the same header called a MISC, followed by predefined diagnostic items and child pages if there are any. 
via the MISC header, you can use some generic command to set up the automatically generated P1D with your connected ECUs. On the top, there is a node field, which was shown and mentioned already, like the node use correctness checking to make them visible. That means the LHX does not match with the P1D or the node this page contains eight generated diagnostic items. This means the um, selected page provides eight signals, parameters or checkpoints altogether called generated diagnostic items. Below the nodes, there is a group of actions, um, so buttons which you can click to start that action, like download file, read API document file, correctness checking, select ECU, and statistics. Download file starts the download file to ECU process with a selected file. Read API document file opens the API document of the HWD used in the project related LHX file. Correctness checking the correct match between the downloaded LHX on the ECU and the P1D will be checked. Select ECU possibility to replace existing ECU with a ECU currently in your system. And last but not least, some statistics of the LHX are shown like compiling date, ROM, RAM and non-volatile usage and percentage, number of automatically generated pages, read and writable items in this P1D. The rest of this automatically generated P1D, like the number of writable and readable signals depend on the application itself. What HWD has been used with all his subpages and related bio signals, number of checkpoints and set values. As I said at the beginning, it is still for evaluation and not fully implemented and validated. But for a fast online cross check during software development, a nice feature to see the hardware signals and checkpoints used on the connected ECU without developing a service to pages and without the need to assign all these signals manually. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that PlusPoint community help is available on the PlusPoint user forum. Check out other videos on our YouTube channel or contact the PlusPoint help desk. Thank you for your attention.